use our research poster on Give Them a Hand to Develop Their Brain, where we did a randomized control trial comparing uh, standard nursing care with several other groups, group B being an unscented Zaki, group C being a maternally scented Zaki, and group D being a snugly insert that was maternally scented. And what we did was we were trying to decide which product we felt was going to be the most efficacious for our preterm babies, looking at several behavioral clues, and vital signs, uh, demographic information, and physiologic data. And what we found was that we had um, statistical significance when we used the maternally scented Zaki. The product helped with self-regulation of our preterm babies when we looked at cardiorespiratory, uh, apnea and bradycardia, infant's color, feeding, body movements, sleep and wake cycle, self-quieting, and attentive behaviors. And these were rated over a span of time. Uh, these self-regulatory behaviors had st statistical significance definitely against standard nursing care and definitely in favor of using a maternally scented Zaki. The Zaki was maternally scented on the mother on the back of her neck or between her breasts for one hour. And as you can see with episodes of apnea and bradycardia by poison regression, we were able to demonstrate that the maternally scented Zaki in our pilot study had no apnea or bradycardia. Uh, the odds of observing stress behaviors over time was higher for infants that received nursing, standard nursing care than for infants that received the simulated interventions. We feel that the maternally scented Zaki or the maternally simulated intervention suggests an efficacious method to reduce adverse physiologic and developmental behaviors of 28 to 34 week infants in our level three neonatal intensive care unit. For our pilot study, it significantly reduced life-threatening apnea of prematurity. It also significantly decreased, we had none, no episodes at all in the infants that um, were provided maternally sent, the maternally scented Zaki. I just want to let you know that in this group we had only one infant that was on caffeine and that infant happened to be in the group that was with standard nursing care and that group had the most episodes of apnea and bradycardia. And so I what is significant about uh, no apnea or bradycardia events that those are life-threatening events that's why we have to hardwire the infants and it also requires usually some type of pharmacological intervention and in my unit it's usually caffeine. These infants are on an SpO2 or a pulse oximeter and they're also hardwired for respirations and cardio, you know, uh, EKG. And when these infants demonstrate apnea and bradycardia, not only does it take nursing time to go over there, wash your hands, get in there and stimulate them, but then further on down the line, if it continues to happen, it could lead to things such as putting the baby back on mechanical ventilation. It could lead to the use of caffeine or a drug that has to be given IV or through the baby's OG tube. Um, so the alternative, is a lot you know, riskier. Beside the fact that if your heart rate drops, so does oxygenation to the organs in your body and also to your brain. And this is a rapidly developing brain in that last trimester. Okay, and <clears throat> so you didn't use caffeine for the ones that had the Zaki? We took, um, you know, we took demographic data and we tracked the babies that were given different medications, whether it was antibiotics or caffeine. But one of our most frequently asked questions it was, in each one of those groups, how many of those inf infants were already on caffeine? And in our study, we only had one infant, and that was in the A group, which was our standard nursing care, that was on caffeine. The infants that weren't on caffeine were in the other groups also, the point being that these were not medicated infants prior to the study. These infants were infants that were not on caffeine yet. And so we feel that's a, a very clean assessment of what happened in our institution. We want to go multi-center with this. We want to acquire some federal funding. Uh, we feel that the ability to use a maternal scent and the weight of the Zaki has, has a benefit that we don't fully understand yet. And we want to take it to a larger scale to make sure that we get the same data. And that's why we're here at the APHA trying to secure some federal funding for preterm babies.